Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams. And in this video, we're gonna continue our journey into the pre-production process. Now we finished our storyboards, so we have a collection of images, still images, they're not moving anywhere. And we need to convert that into an animation. But before we do, there's a middle step. There's something in the middle here. It's called the animatic. An animatic is kind of like a choppy looking animation. We're gonna take our storyboards, we're gonna lay them out on a timeline, and we're gonna get to appreciate the timing that we've achieved. If you have a voiceover, now's a good time to get that laid out as well. Or if you don't, you can use a scratch track to time it along. Or if you're using music or sound, this is where you need to start assembling your parts together so that it starts to make a cohesive piece. We may need to make parts shorter, longer, faster, slower. We can only tell that when we introduce that fourth dimension of time. I'm gonna go through a few methods on how to accomplish that. We can use an editor like Premiere. We can start it right away in After Effects. Heck, you might even use PowerPoint. We probably won't use PowerPoint in here. So please join us as we try to improve our motion design pre-production with an animatic. This whole series on pre-production is brought to you by Millinote. Millinote is a wonderful web application that helps us organize our pre-production process. We've been using it to go from mood boards into storyboards and style frames and animatics, taking us through the entire project, all the way from design brief to final execution. It's a great way to organize a collection of nebulous ideas and get you being more effective with your pre-productions. Please use the link in the description to get yourself a free trial of this wonderful application and start making your pre-production even more productive. So before we begin, an animatic, we need to have our storyboards more or less complete, or at least complete to a stage where we're happy to start laying them out. Here I've got the collection of storyboards, and if you've been following this series, you've seen us arrive at this. But we could use sketch storyboards, yours might be a lot rougher, you might even have a mixture of rough and shaded, and ones that are more lines, ones that are more tone. At this point, we just need enough material to visualize what's gonna happen. Now, as I said in the beginning, we're gonna go through a couple of methods. The first I wanna show you is creating an animatic using a nonlinear editor like Adobe Premiere. So first you wanna import your storyboards. We have them here organized into a nice bin and they're labeled artboards one through 20 in this case. Labeling and naming things is important. You want them to appear in an easily sortable order so that if you selected from first to last and then drag them down here onto the new sequence button, it's gonna create a sequence from first to last in the order that you have named them. That makes this a lot easier. And by default, each one is five seconds. From here, if you don't have any audio, you don't have any voiceover considerations, now you can just start to go in here, grab these images, zoom in on your timeline, and just start pushing them around, just start making them shorter, longer, sliding these things around, making use of all the wonderful editing tools. And what we're doing is we're considering how long we're gonna necessarily be looking at each of these images. Our storyboard is supposed to be the main beats to communicate the story of this piece. So how long do I think we'd be looking at this establishing shot? How long is it gonna take for us to observe people setting up the pieces on this board or just to establish what's going on? You may have to reference back to the script to figure out, well, what kind of action is actually supposed to be happening here? So we're meant to have a push into the board. So how long do we envision that taking? I think two seconds is, is quite long enough. And you can drag it like that or you can drag the other clip over top of it and that'll, that'll remove it. So now, all right, that's probably enough. Now we're gonna move to this angle. And then how long before the next thing that happens, how long before this arm comes into frame? I think it should be happening, happening pretty quick. Boop, beep. And then the hand will go away. We don't have a board for that. We don't have a board for the hand coming and going. And we also don't have boards for the hand coming in and touching the clock again. So if we wanted to add more layers of detail here, we might draw those other beats that are also meant to happen in this shot. But in this case, I think I'm just gonna grab over here this clip. I'm gonna hold down Alt, drag, creating a duplicate of it on my timeline. And then we'll say, we're gonna look at this, and then this, and then the hand comes out. Oh, maybe that needs to be a bit longer. Let's, let's pad that out a little bit. And then let's have the hand go away, boop. And then 
we're going to zoom in to that. So now you can see that we're kind of establishing the timing of this thing. And we can think about, is this too fast? Is this too slow? And we can really start to feel the timing of this piece. The second thing that you want to be doing in this animatic phase is to be bringing in any audio that is going to be specific to this project. So that might mean recording a voiceover and putting it down, or this is all pretty nebulous, it's too early in the process for you. I would recommend recording your script as a scratch track if there is going to be voiceover. Often, the massaging of audio and video can feel like two ships trying to dock with each other in the middle of the night in a bumpy ocean. I could move the animation this way. I could have this scene last longer. I could have these things read quicker or slower. So you want to start massaging things around and seeing what works. If you want to bring audio out in a nonlinear editor, this is the perfect spot to bring it out. It's a lot easier than trying to work with audio and audio playback in After Effects. That can be unfun. So here we're able to look at our audio, we can listen to it, and we can find beats like this one, where I think a scene should probably change if there's like a kadunk. So maybe we're pushing into the board. And these beats could be dictating when we're changing, when we're moving, when actions are happening. Those beats could be we've changed scene, the hand comes in and grabs, the hand comes in and hits the clock, and then we change to the next thing. So these beats might be dictating how you need to be moving through a scene. And you can tell right up front, if these beats aren't lining up with how things should be animated, it feels rushed, it feels slow, now you can swap it out. And if you've been sticking through this whole series, you know you might have an audio-driven piece, you might have a visually-driven piece, so you may just decide, I'm going to do the animatic and we figure out some audio to go with it, or I'm going to lay down some locked audio, we're going to figure out the visuals to go with it. So those are the decisions you want to be making here, and in this non-linear editor, that's a lot easier to do. Now, since you've been listening to me talk, I've been speeding up the process of making all these choices, and now we've clipped together a wonderful piece for us to enjoy. And clearly, there are some tweaks left to be made. So you can see, visually, when we look back at our goals for certain scenes and what we wanted to achieve, this timing here is probably not what we want because we're going from thinner and then into thicker bands. We know that these images are gonna be on screen short, short, long, longer, longest. So we'd probably want to invert that relationship and see how that feels. But here it's easy to play with those ideas. We can play with how long we're looking at certain things and then we can start animating them. If we started into production and animation right away, then we get into some costly oopsies. Here we can really define what we're doing before we have to go do it. Which is why I generally say, start your animatic, start this process in a non-linear editor of some kind. Maybe that's Premiere, maybe that's Final Cut, maybe that's Vegas? Maybe it's actually something that creates animatics out of storyboards already. There are various storyboard softwares to make that happen. But some people like to start right in After Effects. If we crack the old After Effects open, we can create a new composition, and you'll want to work in whatever size your storyboards are, which should be at least the frame ratio of what you're creating, but you might crop in narrower or larger and move things around. And then again, you would want to either just drag in all of your boards in here and then start dropping them down onto a composition or just drag them onto the new composition button, which will bring up this dialogue. And then you can specify how long you want the stills to be. And if you'd like them to be sequenced or not, and you will want them to be sequenced because we're putting them in a sequence. And then whether you want them to overlap or not. Start with say three seconds long and use the dimensions of the first artboard. And then you hit okay. And we end up with these wonderful stairs, which is pretty much exactly where we started in Premiere. You can also combine these two methods. You could say start in Premiere, and then we could take this, we could copy it, we could go back into After Effects, and then we could uh, paste it. Then you end up with this kind of a thing, which isn't necessarily terrible. Uh, just notice that the frame size of the composition is a little bit different because the thing we're copying and pasting isn't exactly the same size. However you get things in here and start massaging them, one thing I love about doing some of this process here in After Effects is it's very easy to start adding in what kind of motion we want to have. First, let me just fix up this comp here so we can go to our composition settings. 
and we know that this is a, uh, a 720 by 1280 situation, we can go in here, we can start adding motion to things. We could be keyframing the position, rotation, scale of these boards to get us a little bit closer to where we wanna be. You can keyframe things here in Premiere as well. And sorry for jumping back and forth, but I think it's important to kind of call things out so we can draw the parallels. You can go into the effects controls of clips here in Premiere, and you can add keyframes on their scale if you wish. So you could go ahead and have this scale up if you wish, and then it's doing this. But I find you don't have as much control here in Premiere. In After Effects, this is where I like to do simple things like let's change the scale a little bit. So maybe we start here and we're doing a bit of a zoom in. So then we can figure out, oh yeah, this is a nice feeling. Uh, but you can also do little ramps if you'd like. Again, this is the space where you wanna be trying things out. You wanna be feeling how things are gonna go in a more general sense. Maybe something doesn't work, then quickly get rid of it and try something else. At this stage, we're really just trying to add layers of detail, motion and timing detail, so that we can understand the feeling of this piece and the direction it's taking. This is where it's easy to course correct. It's gonna become less easy to course correct real soon. Once we have our timing and general movement kind of ironed out, it's actually pretty easy to take these and turn them into discrete chunks or discrete pieces in After Effects. We might decide that all of this needs to be one scene. And so we would grab all of these and then we would pre-compose them, Command-Shift-C, give this a scene number, and now all of those have been grouped in here and we can actually start to add assets and start animating in this space. And we know that those things belong together because we saw them and grouped them. So now we have a way to quickly bridge from the animatic into actual production using After Effects because we're able to chunkify and decide what goes into what discrete scenes. Now, someone else might look at this and say, well, because the script is calling for an advanced kind of orbiting transition between this and this, then those two things should be stuck in a scene together. So you might even duplicate some of these layers and we might mash these two into a comp together because that's a complex transition we need to achieve. And so those two images, those two references should be present in that composition as our background. So the animatic can be used as a tool to define your production, what things need to live in comps together to achieve those kinds of things. And that should about do it. There are many ways to make this animatic, obviously. You don't necessarily have to use the programs we've used here, but hopefully these methods can help get you effectively making these things. This is really where your piece starts to take shape, massaging things forward and backwards, speeding up, slowing down, and it really helps us to know what we're getting into before production has actually started. Again, this is a tool for you to estimate how long things are gonna take and how long things are gonna last. Animatics can really communicate the effectiveness of a piece or the emotional impact of it before you have to start really investing in the production. If you want to see more of this pre-production series, please check out the playlist. There'll be a link to that. We go all the way from the beginning of a project right through to animation. If you enjoy learning about motion design, After Effects, pre-production, all this great stuff, then please subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions about animatics, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. I try to get to all the questions in the comments when I'm able. And if you have more general questions, get at me on Twitter. I'm at EC Abrams on there. Get involved on the Facebook page. Links to all that stuff is in the description. And if you'd like to try out Milano, the sponsor of this tutorial, please check out the link in the description and enjoy a free trial of that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around the internet.